Hello and welcome to Peggy's Tropical Garden, coming to you from the Florida Keys with a wish list plant unboxing from Asian Plant Exports of Thailand. Now I've ordered from this company before and had an okay experience, but I've really been wanting a Monstera Albo and I bought a cutting that died, so I decided to take that chance again. I ordered this plant on May 6th and didn't receive it until June 20th. And as you can see here from the paperwork, it was held up in customs, it was opened, it was inspected. And that's why I always recommend that you get the proper paperwork. Most importantly, the phytosanitary certificate. And that's what the, inspect, the Department of Agriculture is looking for when they inspect this plant. They're looking to make sure that the plants being imported don't introduce any new bugs, insects, anything like that, um, diseases into the U.S. agriculture. So without this piece of paper being in this box and what is said to be in this box being in this box, this plant would have been confiscated and destroyed. Fortunately, I had the right paperwork, so it made it through customs. And as you can see, it was quarantined on the tw or treated on the 25th of May. And again, I ordered this on May 6th. So I have it here now. I'm pretty excited about it, although I'm kind of nervous about it. I'm not going to say exactly what I paid for this plant, um, but it's definitely the most expensive plant I've ever purchased. And I paid for airmail. And once it got to the United States, I figured that it would be kind of express delivery, but it was not. It wasn't DHL at all. This went US, uh, excuse me, UPS ground. Now, I've never, I've ordered plants internationally before, as well as in the States, and I've never had anyone ship a plant UPS ground. So that's part of the reason this plant took so long. So I don't know what to expect by opening this, um, when I open this box and look at this plant. But it's definitely something I really want. I'm surprised at the size of the box as well. I expected the plant to be a little bigger. But um, we'll see. Again, I've ordered from this company before. I wasn't real thrilled with them. But I wanted to take the chance again because I wanted this elbow so bad. And I wasn't willing to pay the asking price right now in the U.S. for this plant. So I guess, you know, what can you do? So let's see what we have here. Okay. Um, well, it's alive. And it's, you know, it's in a small package. So it's kind of folded up here which is not a good thing. You never want to see your leaves folded with creases and things like that. And this time I'm not going to go easy on this company. Um, the packaging, I'm not real pleased with. I ordered one plant. I paid a lot for this plant and I paid a lot for shipping. I would have expected a suitable size box and would not have expected the leaves to be folded on each other like this. This is never good because a lot of times in the creases where the plant leaves are folded, you're going to get browning and the leaf is going to die. So looks like two of these are okay. Um, the stems seem to be pretty healthy. And I'm thinking so far the plant looks good. Again, it's a little bit smaller than I expected to see um, to receive based on the pictures on the website. But um, let's take a look at these roots to get the real story about this plant. Hopefully it has some roots. Okay, let's see what we have. The sphagnum moss, it's not damp at all. And again, it's been in the postal system for some time now, so I'm not surprised by that. The root here seems to be viable it's not squishy or anything like that it's nice and firm but let's look at it and it's really just one root so 
I mean, it's a big root, but it's just one root. Okay, so overall it looks pretty good. I don't see any signs of problems. Um, this yellow leaf I expect to die, but the rest of it, it's looking pretty good. I don't see any soft spots anywhere. I don't feel any soft spots anywhere on the root. You always want to check your root to make sure that there's no signs of rot or anything like that before you plant it up or put it in water. Now I'm getting ready to go out of town for a week, so kind of bad timing for this plant to arrive, but I'm glad it got here before I left. Normally I check a plant if it looks like it's well hydrated, I will go ahead and pot it up in soil. This one doesn't seem to be dehydrated, although it has been in the mail for quite some time. But since I'm going out of town, I don't want to run the risk of it not getting watered when it needs to. And I certainly don't want my husband to water my plant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in this glass cylinder on a bed of sphagnum moss. So I've soaked the sphagnum moss, I've squeezed the water out of it, and I'll just put the plant in there. As you can see, the leaves are starting to settle, starting to open up. Just want to look at these roots to make sure everything is nice and firm. Because the last thing you want to do is, if you have a squishy root, squishy roots, meaning that they're rotting or something like that. The last thing you want to do is put them on anything wet or put them in water. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same thing. Squeeze out the sphagnum moss here and cover the top portion of the roots. I just want, I don't want any part of the root to be in a situation where it can just get dry from the air and things like that. So this moss is slightly damp. As you can see, I've squeezed the water out of it. And, you know, that way, if I put it in soil, I run the risk of the soil getting dry. And since this plant has been dry for I don't know how long, I don't want that to happen. I don't want this plant to decline any while I'm gone. And since I can't keep an eye on it, I figure this is the safest bet. And since the moss is only slightly damp, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a piece of plastic wrap at the top. It's um, not going to be closed on the side where the stems of the plant are, um, are higher than the glass. But I just don't want the water to evaporate too quickly from the moss. I want it to stay as damp as possible until I return. Now, if you wanted to let the root system develop more, you could actually leave this in the same environment um, don't necessarily have to cover the top, but you can, and you could leave it in there for weeks until the roots develop more. I don't plan to do that, but if I do come back and the plant is limp or anything like that, then I will leave it in here until it looks like it's ready to be planted. Now I'm going to give you one good look at the leaves because we really didn't take a good look at it. It's a beautiful plant. This leaf has a nice combination of white and green, so I'm really pleased with that. I'm glad that it's a mature plant. It has the fenestrations already in the leaves. Absolutely beautiful plant. Now, the yellow leaf over there is not going to last long, I assure you. It's already declining, so I don't expect it to be around very long but I'll leave it on there for now. It'll help with photosynthesis. And as you know, plants that have a lot of white in them need all the help with photosynthesis they can get. And then the other leaf over here has a little more white in it than I'd like to see. Yes, it's beautiful, but if you know anything about Monstera albos and white plants, the white leaves tend to go brown and make it so it's harder for the plant to photosynthesize. So you really want, I mean, half and half or a little less than half would be optimal. So I'm going to give you a look at what this plant looked like when I came back from my trip. Okay, guys, you know it's bad when you're out of town and all you can worry about is this plant back at home wondering how it's doing. 
I actually will admit I've had my husband FaceTime me a couple of times to show me how my plant was doing. And all I have to say is, thank goodness I have a sweet, cooperative husband. So I appreciate that so much because I had to know that this plant was doing okay. When I got back, the yellow leaf was, you know, it was starting to decline even more. So I went on and cut that off. And as you can see, I potted her up. She's in a mix of soil, perlite, and orchid bark. She seems to be doing fine. The leaves are standing on their own. I have it over here in my nook right by the humidifier. I'm hoping that that will keep the white parts of the leaves from turning brown. It's over here by my small grow light and it also gets some sunlight during the day from the window. So I'm hoping it likes its new home. I'm happy to have it here. I can mark my Monstera Albo off of my wish list. So I'm happy about that. That was my number one on my wish list. And so now I'm on to my varicosum. So thank you so much for watching this unboxing and update. I hope to see you next time. Stay well. Bye-bye.